Ah, uh, the, the beautiful ideas that come. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take this force on A, and I'm going to multiply it times the displacement of A. So F sub A is the force on A. Now, Newton's second law, what is force equal? Mass times charge. Now, there were a lot of quiet voices there. That would have been an incredible time. Should have been like quiet. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's the mass of A. So now we have this acceleration times time. Acceleration, what's the math definition of acceleration? Uh, velocity. 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 Change velocity. Change of time. All right, so I have change in velocity over change in time times. And there's a dot here on purpose. This is a, we're doing a dot product. This is a dot product. Um, just as a refresher, what does that mean again? I feel like I've done it already, but I, did we talk about dot products in here? You did, yeah. but I just don't remember it. Okay, uh, let's get to the next point and then we'll do, okay. uh, we will definitely go over dot yeah. products again. Uh, displacement. What's a formula for displacement? Let's assume constant acceleration. Change of position over. Change. Nope. It is just change in position, but yeah. not what I want. I want time in it. Okay. I thought you said we're starting. To I was about to say yes. Yeah, change in position, position over change in time. Oh, you think no. we're no. velocity? Yeah, one of the cake formulas. Oh. Uh. Yeah. 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 It's Give me a second. The initial velocity and initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time. Squared. Times, 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 times squared. Yeah, VIT plus one half AT squared. I think Jacob, that's one you were starting on yeah. also. Yeah. Uh, the other one is actually going to be more useful here. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, okay. Yes. Right. Maybe it'll save us several steps. To, so what did, the other one. what did she you say? You remember the more complicated one. See, the VIT plus one half AT squared. It's the only one I oh, can actually remember. It's, it's the, the, the VI. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's VI plus VF over two, and then times time. All right. So first off, we have time here. Time's a scalar, not a vector involved. It's not involved in the dot product itself or the meaning of dot product. But time will cancel out. I have it on the top and the bottom. It goes away. That two on the bottom is also a scalar. I can just pull that one out. And so I end up with one half times mass of A times V final minus V initial dot product with V final plus V initial. How would we know that you just said you pulled the two out? Is that what that one half is over here? Yes. Oh, okay. Dividing by two? Yeah. Multiplying by half. So now dot product. Right. What's the VF minus VI times VF plus VI? Where did that come from? All right, so change in velocity, change is always final minus initial. So that becomes V final minus V initial. Okay. And we have VI plus VF here. All I did is just change the order of division. Uh, okay. gotcha. Commuter property of addition says I can do that. So when you're doing dot products, what are you looking for? If I've got A here and I got B here and some angle between them. The hypotenuse? No. That A is the hypotenuse. You're looking for the opposite side? What are you looking for when you're doing dot products? The product. Pardon? The product. True. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking for the dot product. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure I've gone over this? I figured one person would remember. I'm thinking the angle, but that doesn't sound right because we're probably already given it. Apparently, any exposure to this before was not permanent. When dealing with dot products, you want to multiply parallel components. So we break A up into its components. 
And this would be A times the cosine of theta. This would be A times the sine of theta. And so the dot product is A cosine of theta times B or AB cosine theta. So if I know the angle between two vectors and I'm doing a dot product, it's just the magnitude of one times the magnitude of the other times the cosine of the angle between them. So why do we have a dot product in this case? Because I want a scalar in the end. Okay. Dot products are scalars. Because at this point, we're only multiplying magnitude of A and magnitude of B. Right. Just a quick bit here. If I have five newtons, 30 degrees, times four meters, 10 degrees, what is the dot product between the two? Five newtons would be A, right? Yep. And then. So, like five times four? Okay. So, we have five newtons times four meters times the cosine of. How degrees? 30. 40. 40. There we go. It's the angle between them. Oh. oh. Right. This one's at 10 degrees, that one's at 30 degrees. The difference between them is 20 yeah. degrees. You know, I'm sure if we just okay. took a little time, we would have gotten yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Just keep going down. Jacob was waiting for the other players to sacrifice themselves. I, I, process of elimination. I was just, I was just going with the next one. Uh, I should have picked numbers that work better, but cosine of 20 degrees. Uh, 5 times 4 times cosine of 20 is 18.79. 18.79. Uh, goes down to 20? Oh, never times, mind. Times 20. All right, so, units? Newton meters. Newton meters. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, I remember. this. If we have it in I hat and J hat, so if I have two I hat minus three J hat, plus four, uh, not plus, times four i hat plus two j hat. Since we care about multiplying the parallel parts to it, we can just cut to the chase. I think last time I went through and I wrote, wrote the whole thing out and then we got rid of stuff. But you just multiply the parallel parts. Eight. Minus six. Minus six. So this answer would be two. I didn't give any context to it, so that two has no meaning other than the fact that it's the math answer. Yeah, I was just about to ask what that means, but okay. Uh, I might have tuned out for a second. You said we multiply the. Oh, okay. We multiply them together. Gotcha. Yes, when you're doing a dot product, because technically you would foil it out, but i dot j yeah. is zero. Okay. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> so, if I did, let's take that five newtons, 30 degrees, dot product with five newtons, 30 degrees, what would that equal? This is no physical meaning, by the way. One? 25 degrees, cosine of zero? No, cosine of zero. Cosine is zero. No, just cosine of zero is one. Yeah, so it's just 25. Newton squared. Yeah, 25 newton squared. Oh. If I have any vector dot product with itself. That's going to be squared. Wait, k squared? It's a squared. Okay. Because the angle of, between a vector and itself is always zero degrees, or zero radians, if you're a fan of that. So you need to just end up multiplying the magnitude squared. One other concept, commutative property holds. 
So I multiply these two together. If I flip, flip them around, so I have four meters, 10 degrees, dot five newtons, 30 degrees. It would be the same thing. If you, yeah. Because ultimately, because the cosine of 20 degrees is the same thing as the cosine of negative 20 degrees. Doesn't really matter, but that, that angle, you don't have to worry about whether it's plus or minus because it's the same. Well, cosine's an even function. Right. Other questions on dot products before we actually use it? We know this is scalar because we don't have a vector to go with it? Or when you do dot products, it produces a scalar. I mean, it's, it's called a scalar product also. It's just Right. What I'm asking is for, the, for our problem, like, um, we know we're, we're trying to find the mass of, or I'm sorry, the force of acceleration, right? No, we're just looking at force times displacement to see what that yields. Right. And the only way we know that it's a dot product is because it's, we don't have like a physical vector to look at. Is that what you're saying? No. Is your question about why we're doing the dot product at all, or is the question about why, well, we still have these vectors here. We haven't yeah. gotten rid of any vectors yet. I'm asking how we know that it's a dot product, like at all. Typically, when you do a cross product, you're dealing with things that are perpendicular. Okay. We're, what we're interested in here is, uh, I apply a force to a table, what's gonna happen to it? Okay. And so, the part of the force, so if I move this table, the magnitude of my force is not really important. What's important is how much of my force is trying to push the table that way. Okay. So that's why we're doing a dot product conceptually, is we care about the force that is actually trying to help it move or keep it from moving, whichever way it's happening. Okay. Other questions right now? Uh, I do have a question just about why we didn't leave this at, maybe you said this before, but why this one down here was not left at a i hat minus six j hat. You said i hat times j hat is zero. Right. Is I hat times I have equal to one? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. Because the magnitude of, a, of the unit vector is one. So it would just be one squared times the cosine of zero. Okay. Yeah, it's critical when doing a dot product that the vectors go away at some point. Okay. So I've got a dot product right there. We're going to foil. So I have one half mass of A times VF dot VF. That's the first outer plus VF dot VI. Inner negative VI dot VF plus VI dot VI. Now let's simplify. VF dot VF. VF squared. One half mass of, mass of A times VF squared. I have VF dot VI minus VI dot VF. They cancel out. Yes, they do. And then at the end, VI uh, squared. So we end up with, if I distribute one half, oh, wait a second, I lost a negative. That should be minus at the end. So I have one half MA times V final squared, and that's speed squared, minus one half MA V initial squared. And I assume most of you are thinking internally, oh man, that's just incredible. <laughs> oh, we'll yeah. be taking one step further. We'll take more than one step, but we'll take another step now. Physicists don't like writing one half mv squared. That's just too much for them to do. 
So they said, hey, let's just use a single letter. How about a capital K? Oh, no. You're joking, right? <laughs> and so this right here just becomes K final of A. Minus K A initial. And that's just the change in K. Yeah, now all the pieces of it fall into place. A moment for questions before I actually explain why they bothered to use the letter K. Is it a capital K? It is a capital K. Yeah. <laughs> what is K? Right. Solubility. This letter right here, that's it. It's like, yeah, but what is it? I, I'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. Do you, I know that wasn't your question. <laughs> do you have any idea why so many people are infatuated with the letter K in like physics and chemistry? And I, and ultimately, uh, I, I suspect a lot of it comes from, uh, I assume that the German word for constant is starts with a K. And so that's probably where a lot of stuff comes from. Good to know. I'll, I'll or the Latin it. or the Greek. Those are the three main culprits for why they choose certain letters. All right. All right. Other questions before we I actually try to connect this? All right. This right here, my force times displacement. This is work. Work is an official physics term, symbolized by a capital W, which is why I don't use capital W for weight. Force times displacement is work. For those who've had some exposure to physics, we can actually define work as the integral of f dot dx. If you have no idea what this means, don't worry about it, that's just a bonus. If the force is constant, you'll use this formula. If the force is not constant, you would have to use calculus. This K over here stands for kinetic energy. In this particular case, K from kinetic, which is from the Greek. In our formula for work, are we gonna have the subscripts like the A and the A? Or is that, that was just pertaining to our that was pertaining to our specific example here, but we can make it more generic. We have work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Now, I do need to throw in one other bit here. When we made this substitution here, when we said force is equal to mass times acceleration, at that point, we have established that this force right here is the total force. Total force is equal to mass times acceleration, and since that's the total force, this is the total work or net work. So the total work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. This mathematical relationship here is known as the work energy theorem. Now, personally, I do not think it should be called a theorem because I say that it's true because we define work and kinetic energy to make it work, to make it happen, to make it exist, to make it real. But it's still called the work energy theorem. Questions before I talk about different kinds of force? and therefore different kinds of work. Do you have an opinion on the term workforce? Do <laughs> <laughs> you know It's those people not in physics, just taking physics terms and just using them however they feel like it. <laughs> like reaction, really. What is the world gonna come to physics? <laughs> Is the uh, the unit still going to be newtons if you're doing uh, a change in K equation? No, all right, so let's talk about units. Okay. I probably should have done it sooner. All right, so the units of work should be the units of force times the units oh, okay. of displacement. Okay. 
So in SI units, that would be a Newton times a meter, or Newton meters. That's that is too much for physicists to write. What? So that is known as a joule. Oh. No, no, no. Oh. That's what that was. <laughs> I think everybody at the same time just had this sudden realization of I've heard that before and now I can put that to like a like a an actual thing, you know. It is an actual thing. Uh, anyone take a wild guess about who it's named after? There you go. Like if you yes. yes. Um, <laughs> the last name is Jewel, yeah. Yeah, Jules I, I think you're pretty safe with white and dude. <laughs> Why do you have work and force and uh, this is the the symbol I use for when I'm talking about just the units. Um, the unit of work is equal to the unit of force times the unit of displacement. Okay. Of work. Sometimes since I'm doing SI there, I put SI, SI, and SI. Just to talk about specifically the SI units. So joules, does that relate to heat in any way? It does. Is that it's because heat deals with energy transfer, and so we're dealing with energy joules? Okay, so like the amount of joules that it would take to heat up water is saying how much energy it needs to make everything heat up, like move around faster. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and there's a there's a direct conversion factor for calories to joules and joules to calories also. Okay. And just to make it more complicated. There's a there's also a conversion factor between calories and food calories. There for whatever it, reason. Yeah, in physics, when we say calories, we do not mean food calories. Food calories is kilocalories, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's all by a factor of a thousand. <laughs> the nutritionist coming in, taking our physics terminology. <laughs> I'm Beats still me. a little lost by when you're talking about just the units of weight and just the units of force. Okay. All right, so this is the, I defined my equation here of work is force times displacement. So the units have, the units on both sides must be equal to each other. Otherwise the equation can't work. The units have to, it's called dimensional analysis, but the units on the, this side have to equal the units on this side. Okay. The so units on this side is the units of that times the units of that. Okay. Is work equal to joule? 